This week, we saw a huge update to Steam's game recording beta, and we'll review all of the improvements. Plus, there's a new version of FSR that has major implications for existing and future titles. We'll discuss. And the community-led non-Steam launchers utility gets a big refactor. All of this and more today. Let's get right into the news. All right, Session is a skateboarding sim that, quote, faithfully reproduces your feet on the skateboard. It looks like a throwback to EA's Skate. And well, the game recently got full Steam Deck verified status this week, and it also added cloud save support too. It's great to see developers putting in the work and getting their games verified on deck. Last week, I did an interview with Mark, the creator of The Outcaster's Notebook. We talked about my game, Doodling's Arcade Sports Ball, and the interview is now live on his website. Uh, there's a link below, so make sure you check that out. Uh, it's a fun read. If you're not familiar with The Outcaster's Notebook, this is Mark from uh, Linux Gaming Central. He has a new website now, and uh, he's a good friend of mine, so uh, thank you, Mark, for taking the time to interview me. And make sure you check out our interview over there. Speaking of dude links, you can check it out on Steam. Our first major feature update, codenamed Second Base, is coming out July 18th. There's a release candidate available right now through Steam, so if you own it on Steam uh, and you're interested in checking it out and testing it, you can open up the game's library page, select the gear icon, choose properties, and then select the betas tab. Then you can opt into beta 110. We're actually at 1.2 right now, but uh, I'm not gonna rename this branch. Now, here's a question. Have you heard about non-Steam launchers before? We've talked about it here on the channel once or twice. It's a project that installs the latest GE Proton builds, along with your favorite non-Steam launchers, hence the name. This is pretty neat as it'll not only add uh, the launchers to your Steam Deck, but it will also add them to your Steam library. What's more is that this project supports Battle.net, Epic Games, GOG, Itch.io, Amazon Games, Ubisoft, and even EA app if you're into those. Well, they just had an update this week and it has a number of things that have been reworked and re-implemented. The patch notes boast how they were able to cut the line count from 3,000 lines of code down to just 1,800. That is a pretty impressive refactoring, in my opinion. They also go on to talk about how it's now much easier for community members to add new launchers. There are several other fixes and changes here, and I'm really interested to see where this project goes going forward. At this point, we've got three great ways to play games from other launchers on the Steam Deck. I'm wondering what your preferred method is. Sound off in the comments below. Now, don't forget to like that smash button. It's the best way to tell YouTube that you want to see more videos just like this. You can also subscribe to stay up to date with all the fun stuff that we're doing here on the channel. And you can subscribe to my email newsletter, uh, which goes over all the fun stuff that we do here one year month, right to your inbox. It talks about our YouTube videos. It talks about my upcoming games and upcoming releases for Doodlings. And there's also giveaways. We have a new giveaway starting next week that I'm very excited for. Uh, so keep an eye open for that as well. So this is great news for developers. AMD has released their hotly anticipated Fidelity FX SDK version 1.1 this week. This includes FSR 3.1, which is the star of the show here. The big change here is that FSR 3.1 now separates their frame generation pipeline from the upscaling pipeline. And this means that not only can you use AMD's frame generation without applying upscaling to your image, but you can also use it with any other upscaling or graphics pipeline, including something like Nvidia's DLSS. Now, they've made a lot of changes when it comes to FSR, and it's to the point where a simple update to the FSR library won't suffice for most games. So developers who have integrated FSR 3.0 into their games will need to refactor some of their code in order to accommodate these changes. However, AMD recognizes that this is kind of an inconvenience for game developers, and now they've made FidelityFX API, which should help mitigate this problem going forward. Finally, something that I find really exciting for us Steam Deck gamers is that alongside DirectX 12, Vulkan is now supported as a graphics API for upscaling and frame generation. This means that existing Vulkan first games now have the benefit of FSR unlocked for them. Truly, this is some really exciting tech, and I'm keen to see how it influences our gameplay going forward, especially on handhelds. All right, this week, Humble unveiled the Flashbacks Classics Bundle, which is actually well-named for once. It's called Flashback, 
emphasis on Flash, because many of the games in this bundle are based on old browser games. With this bundle, 15 bucks gets you eight absolute bangers. They are Strike Force Heroes, which is Proton DB Platinum, Submachine Legacy, which is playable, The Last Stand Legacy Collection, which is playable, Worms WMD, which is playable, Super Fancy Pants Adventure, which is playable, Epic Battle Fantasy Collection, which is Proton DB Platinum, Super Meat Boy, which is verified, and VVV, VVV, or as I've called it, V6, uh, is also verified. So I'm a huge fan of Super Meat Boy, V6, and Worms WMD. These titles defined my young adulthood, so it's great to see them here. I mean, literally, Super Meat Boy and V6 are two of the earliest reviews that I did on this channel. Uh, so they've really had an impact on my life. So I guess my question is, what titles are you most excited about in this collection? Sound off in the comments below. As always, a portion of your purchase goes towards charity. And if you use my affiliate links below, you'll be supporting this show at no additional cost to you. So thank you. So the latest Steam client beta just hit, and it has some massive upgrades. So let's go over them here and see what's going on in Steam World. So we're recording some Steam Deck. We're capturing the screen here because not only do I want to show you some gameplay, I also want to show you what the screen capture dialog looks like after we've done our update here. Let's play Vampire Survivors really quick. Now, I'm, I'm very late to the uh, Vampire Survivors party. Um, Liam has been raving about this game forever, and I'm just now getting into it. I'm gonna try adding a user marker, which that's just holding the Steam key, uh, the Steam button, and then hitting the Y button on the controller. All right, garlic. Okay. Um, so let's add another user marker. So we've played a little bit of Vampire Survivors. We've got some footage. So let's go ahead and go into our media. Actually, you know what? It's probably down here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, cool. I unlocked a, a thing. Um, we have post-game summary. We have an actual video file. So I unlocked a uh, an achievement. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, dude, is that achievement? That achievement is right there? That's where, that's like where I actually unlocked the achievement in the, um, in the UI here. That's pretty neat. And you can see where, so that was in my last play session. And then this is where we, uh, put in our user markers and we could give it a name if we wanted to. So let's just do that real quick. Now I'm using the steam deck to do this. Um, so I could give this a name like some marker. It'd be cool if we could color code markers too, like instead of having them all be like that blue planchette or whatever that is, um, it could be like a red or, or green or whatever. Um, but it's really cool that it shows the achievements that you've earned in there. That And that's cool because it's built right into Steam, you know, like, so the game doesn't even have to like, um, add API stuff, but it would be cool if there was API endpoints that we could, uh, or API calls that we could make. I, there's so much I could do like in Doodlings, like anytime there's a score. I was also doing Command and Conquer here, playing uh, CNC. I'm not sure what this black, why this is all black like this. There we go. So yeah, playing Command & Conquer, you know, records all your footage. I mean, now they've um, added the ability to drag uh, and scroll behaviors. So if I wanted to like clip something, let's go, like, let's start a clip and then we can drag this over. And then let's just, uh, what do we do? Save clip to media. Sure. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Oh, we can take a screenshot at the current playback marker. That's pretty cool. So there's this interface here. So we can click clips and then we can see the clips here. I don't like that it has like this black, like empty video file. 
Not sure what that's about. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot nice here. There's a lot of neat things that I like about this. Um, and I'm actually very excited about um, the future of this. I, I want the UI to be less buggy. Um, I want there to be like, uh, if I click on this, I want to be able to hit show and then like pin this timeline here or have like a minimal timeline where these are all consolidated down into like one thing. I, I don't want the, that's a glitch. I don't want uh, this huge interface to take up all of this, uh, all of this space. I want to have like a minimal, oh, this is fine. And having it disappear after a second is fine. But if I'm using a mouse cursor, especially, I don't want this to disappear. If I have my mouse over this, or if any of these are focused, I don't want this to disappear, right? And I want, if I like, if I have like the play button is focused and I hit up it, that, that's actually how I want it to behave. And if I'm doing this, let's see if it disappears. It does not. So, but if I'm using a mouse, nothing is focused and it will disappear. Even if I have like a hover over that, uh, there are a few quibbles I have with this. Like there needs to be space between the icon and the, and the text. And I'm not keen on the text being yellow or, or this being blue. I don't like that. It, it violates the rest of the UI's like paradigm. There is no colored text anywhere else like this. Um, maybe the icons could be, but I don't know. Anyway, this is still in beta. It's great to see Valve uh, working on this because this is something that I've been wanting for forever on the Steam Deck. So what do you think about these changes to game recording? Leave me a comment and let me know. I think that's gonna do it for this week's video, but I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons, my YouTube and my coffee members who make what I do here possible. Thank you. It's because of my supporters that I've been able to continue making videos just like this. So if you believe in the work that I'm doing here, you can use the links below to support this show. And thanks. Before I let you go though, why not check out one of my other recent videos? Uh, this one, for example, which uh, where I talk about controllers for the Steam Deck is pretty good.